oh, I gotta kind of move. My legs are um, sitting like Indian style. I still have problems with this one hip when I fell um, and uh, split my head open. And then, you know, they just focused on my head, so they didn't focus on my hip. And I've done all of this yin yoga and stretching and stuff. That's why I started doing all that was to heal my hip myself. Because when I, as it kept going, it got to the point where I couldn't sit Indian style anymore. My leg wouldn't go down. It like got stuck. So I had to start doing, um, you know, exercises and stuff myself, looking it up and trying to figure out how to fix it. Um... But so yesterday, I um, uh, I was just thinking that because there was a couple of things that there was confirmation stuff. Um, oh, because that was a that was this morning. So when I was talking about um, you know the the difference with the people of like how pioneers and stuff used to be, and then how people are now. And then I just saw a meme about it on Zeducation. And it was just like, you know, a confirmation. And confirmations to me is just like it's dialogue. It's just like, yeah, we hear you. Look at this, you know. So I, I always appreciate those kinds of things. And um, there was another one, too. I think it was on Zeducation, too. Um, I'll think of it in a sec. But... Um, Oh, it was an email I got, and it was um, this email about this uh, farmer, and I guess it's a kind of a commentator, news story person, I'm not sure, and he's reporting on this story, and it's super funny, because it's a farmer who got his leg caught in a piece of machinery, and he had to cut his own leg off, and then uh, drag himself into his house, <laughs> into a... Uh, it was funny when the guy's telling it because he's like, you know, as he's dragging himself, he had to stop and fix the fence, he, you know, because this guy's such a badass and cut his own leg off. And the, and the commentator's funny because he's like, you know, talking about other people who think they're a badass. Really? You're going to cut your own leg off? You think you're a badass? Like, look at this old farmer. <laughs> this is a badass, people. And so he, you know, went in and uh, called and went to the hospital and he kept telling the nurses he couldn't wait to get back home and get back on his job because he's a farmer and he has a lot to do. And that is the thing, too, is about our farmers that, you know, they're getting the raw uh, deal here. They're getting trumped, you know, because the um, mainstream media has it, you know, to direct the uh, collective's attention towards... These people being ignorant, racist, you know, flag flying, you know, crazy people. And, you know, these are the people who have made our world. Like, these people are the ones who have um, relatives that were pioneers who went and started settling these pieces of property. Had this property for generations, you know. These are, like, badasses who don't need the government. That's why the government doesn't want them around. But they do a lot for us. And that, that's when, you know, a corporation went in and tried to take them over. And they did run a lot of farms down and run them out and, you know, fuck them over. And then, you know, they've got all their three-letter agencies that set restrictions and guidelines for the, uh, you know, the basic farmer that they can't meet them. It's just, uh, you know, it's just complete bullshit what they have done to these people who have... Um, you know, made America what America is. And so, well, not entirely. I mean, because part of what America is, is what the deep state has created. <laughs> this illusion of an existence. But these people have really been the bread and butter of, you know, the bones of our country. And they really are badasses. And, you know, I would really like to have a panel of them come in and sit with their dark tan leather skin and them tell us about skin cancer. That's what I'd like to hear. People who are just right out there in it, you know, <laughs> because human beings have been around for a long time. If the sun's out to kill them, then, you know, why are we all just a bunch of lepers with a bunch of growths all over us and dying of skin cancer all the time? Uh, I think that that's part of their agenda to keep you out of the sun 
because they don't want you to be healthy because they know the sun has got vitamin D and stuff. And I go out in the sun every, I try and go every day, even when it's not sunny, I would still go as soon as it was warm enough to sit out. And uh, even though the sun was a lot behind the trees, just to get the, um, the filtered sun is still good. But the, uh, the vitamin D rays, it still comes and, you know, it's still good for your body. There's something like we have an energetic connection to nature that we need to, you know, uh, flourish. We need to, you know, water it. We need to build it up. And um, I think I have like, I don't know, less than an hour, like 45 minutes or something of a solid sun across my patio right there. And I'll go out and sit and get some sun. And I think it's healthy. I think my skin looks better to have color. I think when people, when we go around and we're just so white and pasty, it just doesn't look healthy. And, um, you know, when we go out and we're in the sun, I think it's our more natural way of being. It just makes us look more um, healthy. I think it's kind of uh, funny how, I mean, I don't know very many white people who don't like brown skin. Like everybody's envious, like, oh, they get the dark skin. I have to have this white skin. And um, because, you know, they're so scared to go out and even get any color on their skin because they've been told so much, the sun's gonna kill you, the sun's gonna kill you. And it's just the same too with their misinformation about marijuana. It's a damn ass weed that grows and, you know, that they uh, decided that they needed to outlaw it because they wanted to push alcohol and they didn't want people. Uh, and look at the difference of what alcohol does to people and what uh, marijuana does to people. Like what society wouldn't want everyone to just sit and smoke a joint? Get up in the morning, smoke a damn joint, calm down, <laughs> you know, relax. Or, you know, just don't deal with your anger, go get drunk, and then go out and start beating people up and driving people off the road and killing people. And, you know, it's crazy because alcohol feeds the ego. Marijuana shuts it down. Marijuana, you know, it gets you connected to what's out there, especially if you're sensitive like me. Like, I see myself as being very sensitive to what's out there. And, um... So uh, if I smoke, um, which, you know, basically every day I do, uh, if I smoke, well, it's also great for pain because I'd rather use it like, uh, you do get some achy joints as you get older, I promise. Uh, well, for some people, I'm not going to tell everybody because I don't want to put that out there because you may not. So don't trust me. Don't believe me. I got achy joints. But anyways, so when I want to go out or when I smoke, to me, you know, it just is like, okay, you know, sit and relax. And I just get flooded with, it's like I've opened the windows to the outside of me. And I just start getting information to start telling me stuff and telling me stuff. And, um, you know, it's insightful. Sometimes I'll just sit there and sometimes I'll just sit and listen. Sometimes I'll sit and ask questions and talk and stuff like that. But I get a lot of information. That's why I always was like... It is a very spiritual thing. I've always seen it as like, I feel like um, how I think Indians are, you know, Native Americans, whatever you want to call them, how they saw, saw it, that I feel like that that's how I see it. Like it's a, it's a spiritual connection and you have to be ready for the communication. I don't know what happens for other people. I just know what happens for me. And I just think it's weird that the government thinks that they can come in and tell us that we can't have certain plants and that they can make them illegal. Because the way I see it is uh, uh, this is God's, uh, you know, this place was created and um, the creator put that there for the beings that are on it to use. So, uh, yeah, but the controllers... They only want us to use what they want us to use. And all the stuff they want us to use is so that we um, get sicker and more easy to control. So they don't want you to ever be connected. I mean, fluoride was there to, you know, hopefully dry up whatever, whatever they thought. That the communication, like the little telephone in your head, they thought they could dry it up, I guess. 
use in fluoride. Um, but you can, um, you can have communication. I, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know what my pineal land looks like. I mean, I, Jesus Christ, I was raised where they'd make you go in and get fluoride treatments on your teeth all the time. And, um, everything was fluoride, 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 fluoride in our water, fluoride in everything. So, geez, I don't even know if I have one, but I've got communication with the other side. I've got visions. I've got, you know, I hear all this stuff. And that's one thing too, is with my eyesight, you know, and, um, how it's just, uh, it is, it's a different way of seeing. I'll tell you that it's completely different than how I grew up, obviously. Um, and these things in my eyes that they call floaters that are just multiplying and taking over my eyesight, they, um, are hard to see around. And, uh, and then gl glycoma, you know, narrows your vision. So it's like getting smaller and smaller and then everything is in there interfering with it. And so it's really hard for me to see. And it's hard to explain, um, like, I, I just don't see stuff. Like right now, this is so, um, so just some shapes and stuff. And I can put on my, um, my uh, readers. I think, I mean, I think they're like some of the strongest ones you can get, like 2.75 or something. I don't know how high they go. Maybe they go to four. I don't know how high it goes. But even when I put those on, I still can't read uh, small writing. Like, I think some of the small writing is definitely to make us not read it. They don't want us to read ingredients and stuff like that. And so this small writing is part of the manipulation. But, um, in, you know, when I started having so many problems with my eyes, um, it started with these, um, these flashes and a whole bunch of things going all the time. I kept thinking there was bugs everywhere. There's all these little things going everywhere. And then, you know, they said that was an emergency. I had to go in, well, it just is deteriorated from there. And I was already being treated for the glaucoma, but the glaucoma isn't true glaucoma because it's from my brain injury from the lack of fluid in my brain. So, you know, um, when I very first started having it, I was upset and emotional. And, um, you know, the message, you know, I had gotten back was to focus on my inner vision. And, um, and then as during 2020, when I started hearing about the new med beds that are becoming the quantum healing systems and stuff like that, I started feeling like, okay, you know, this is temporary. This isn't going to be forever. And, um, so I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just going to, you know, live how I'm living right now and being present and not focusing so much on my outer vision. But what's trippy is that like, um, I can be sitting here and, um, you know, because of just being able to see the shapes and colors, sometimes I can see past this reality of what we like the same thing as when I came out of my body and all of a sudden I didn't feel it. And it was weird because I was just stretching. It wasn't like I was trying to come out of it. I wasn't trying to astral project or something. And I just came out. It was very spooky feeling, but that is also what it is like with the vision thing is like, I am able to see uh, sometimes past what is in front of me. And, um, a lot of times it, it looks like, like, uh, darkness and it looks kind of like these colors. Like sometimes it looks like, like a portal or something's going to open. It's like, there's a movement. There's like colors kind of like, you know, um, if you were looking at a board and it has those colors that go up and down, uh, with the sound, like if you change the frequency, you know, and it's moving and, kind of like a grid too like and it's kind of like it's past us like like are the colors all there and then we create this out of the colors with our energetic uh representation of self you know like uh but anyways it's it's right there it's right next to us 
Like, and uh, so my confirmation thing for that, uh, because I had been writing about that. I was writing about my vision and what I could see past that. And um, sometimes I feel like I'm just going to keep staring and staring and I'm going to see something come out. And there is movement. I mean, some of these could be some kind of energetic uh, thing that's moving around. You know, it doesn't ever feel like scary or something like that. But um, it also, it seems like there's a lot of uh, darkness, you know, like kind of like a, I can see it in my head. Kind of like the universe is um, like cavernous, like caverns. Like if you go down the caverns, how there's open parts and closed parts and all that. And like you can go through the open part and you would be in another reality. That's like the portal, like going in there. But they're all around us, you know, it's, it's everywhere around us. But we just don't have the awareness that it's there. But if we did, we'd be able to just step right through. And when you step right through, you can go right where you want. Oh, I just remembered. What movie was that? It was a movie. It was a space movie. Oh, it was Matthew McConaughey. And he was a spaceman guy who was going to... No, he was a some kind of farmer. And he was. they needed to do something in space. So they had him go. And he got caught in that... What I'm talking about... Only they showed it a little bit different, but it does show like what what I it, what I feel like it looks like, um, and so and he's able to go down and go back into the past and stuff because he went into this like time warp thing. It's really uh, it's cool because he does have communication. It, it, it it's pretty cool the movie, but anyways, so that is how I think that it it really is like. It is like this cavernous world all around us in the souls, the spirits that, you know, that are in this particular um, experience. We're creating this experience by pulling these colors and stuff. But we could go out of this experience using this system, go anywhere we want to go at any time because our consciousness can um, relieve itself from this experience, from this body when it wants to. I've come out a couple of times, not on purpose. So I know that it's not that hard, you know, and I, I, um, I see like a lot of people with the astral projection and astral travel and stuff like that. That kind of freaks me out to, you know, force it because I've done it before by accident. But I can understand, you know, how, <clears throat> like, the whole thing with time travel and stuff. It's not like traveling through time. It's just right there. It's right around us. <clears throat> Everything is right there. It's just where your consciousness is focused. That is where you're at. That is what, and that is a gift. That's the beauty, too. Because you're able to focus on this experience, so you can learn from this experience but what we're headed into in this new kind of planetary system of uh, humanity and this uh, conscious awareness is that we will, hush, oh God, we will have those abilities because we will have that awareness of how, oh, how we can, um, how we would be able to move ourselves by disconnecting from this experiencing and focusing on another experience. You know, because this experience is, isn't this, we have death so that we can see a release in this experience, but it's not real. You know, it's just that soul is just gone out there into the honeycomb. It's just out there somewhere and having another experience and they can come back all the time. They're all around us. They're in this darkness that's around us. They're constantly communicating and stuff with us. And so um, there's still some more stuff I want to talk about. So I'm going to start right back.